Yeah, well, a lot of people are asking me, what is Global Britain? You know, I mean, only since February has the British government started to really articulate this idea of, a, of an alternative British future, and it's about Britain and the world. Now, Global Britain, you know, we're all wondering what's behind this, and clearly May is trying to position uh, a, a, an alternative idea of Britain into the future, one that's not just about Britain drawing into itself, Brexit not being simply about battening down the hatches and crawling into your shell, but Brexit actually meaning a new departure. But Donald Trump, uh, in some respects, holds out a certain promise for Theresa May's Conservative Party. Because remember, if we go back to the Brexit referendum in June of 2016, the then President of the United States, Barack Obama, made it very, very clear that Britain could expect no help from the US, that they would be, in Obama's words, at the back of the queue when it came to trade deals and so forth. So there was a sense that America was not going to in any way support this, uh, this idea. Once you got the change of presidency at the end of uh, last year, we got a very different tune from, from Trump. And uh, so there is, within certain segments of the governing Conservative Party in Britain, a sense that here is our life raft. Here is where we can make up the difference for these trade deals, these trade advantages that we've enjoyed for decades in Europe. We can turn to Uncle Sam and they will provide some kind of compensatory economic valve or outlet. The linkages lie in the kinds of voter appeal that both the Brexiteers and Trump are making. Who are they appealing to and what kinds of grievances are they trying to address? And they are both, in a sense, appe appealing to a constituency that f feels that it's been left behind by the processes of globalisation and inward migration. These two processes that have left large portions of Anglophone, Middle America and you know, Middle Britain feeling that they as though they've somehow been left stranded. These kinds of people are the ones who are drawn to a message that is about, uh, on the face of it, sounds like that it is about uh, you know, closing up the shop a little bit, tightening things, tightening up the ship. So in that sense, I think there's a similar resonance in the electorate, but if we look a little closer at how that breaks down in terms of the demographics, and in terms of the voters, and in terms of the two countries and their very, very different political cultures, I think we need to be careful not to overdraw the distinction, something again that I look forward to going into in far more detail when it comes to my lecture in October. This relationship between Donald Trump and Theresa May, between Brexit Britain and Trump's America, these are a set of very complex relationships that are yet to play themselves out. There's so much looking into the future that we simply don't know. We've got an awful lot to learn, but we do have a, a history that we can draw upon. Those of you who are interested in learning more about the road that Theresa May and Donald Trump are hitting hand in hand are welcome to come to see me at my lecture on the 24th of October 2017.